we have a lot to cover and i don't exactly know how to start this video um so let's just immediately get started okay So when you join the SCP site roleplay, you can immediately tell that there are some changes. We have a brand new UI system. It's been completely overhauled, every single feature. And don't forget the UI in-game. As you can see, the cinematic button settings, the sounds, and then you have the radio, which we have a brand new radio as well. The button is still T to type into the chat, and then you can also press H in order to hide it. Along with the new recent UI changes, there's also been a long-awaited camera revamp this update is starting to feel like a whole new game now and yeah these cameras are also pretty nice as well because first of all i can point these cameras anywhere i'd like it's no longer a static and also if i point this at myself and look at the camera it's also changed positions as well some other things i haven't mentioned are the level up system the door sounds for opening and also the brand new backpack system as well new shop team select and report system and the new leaderboard as well it's time to talk about money because the new economy system is massive and it really should have just been its own update. There are multiple arsenals around the map where you can buy stuff for your character, such as guns and equipment, and also the cosmetics for your own character. The only cosmetics that actually do help you are the night vision and scrambler goggles, and the gas mask, which prevents you from taking any damage in the coolants. Speaking of NVGs, there are also new animations for the scrambler and NVG goggles. And obviously the new goggles aren't free, so you'll have to grind for a little bit in order to pay for them. Here are the night vision goggles. After I press N, you can, you know, see in the dark a little bit better. And now you can only hold three guns, which are primary, secondary, and then a Glock 17 or a Deagle, if you wish to do so. There are also brand new sights in the game that aren't functional just yet. So if you really wanted to, you could buy a sniper scope or the M4A1, which I don't know who would actually do that. That's kind of weird. There's a plus sign right here which looks like they're going to add suppressors into the game at some point, but as of right now, they're not in the game. You can equip any gun as a MTF as long as you have the money. This might be different in the public release because as of right now, I'm recording this in the stress testing version. Things might be subject to change, but hopefully not a lot because then this video would be very out of date. And there are also a few extra armories around the map as well. Along with the new economy system, we also have gotten a few new team features. One of these is obviously the brand new morphs that every single team gets and the customization that comes behind that as well. Every O5 gets a random number selection when they join the team and O5s also get the command offices that will have customization in the next update. There is a new flamethrower gun for beta 7 to use during 610 events and a couple new features that you'll have to find out for yourself. Here's a showcase of all the brand new overseer morphs along with a few variants that I made myself. Now we're getting into the bulk of this video, which is the build changes. Along with the recent new build changes, we've also gotten a armory rework as well. So as you can see, the armory has been expanded quite a bit. The spawns of MTF and RRT have been changed and split apart. The RRT room has a more tactical feel to it. Well, MTF is a little bit larger because it has to house, you know, four different branches. There are also these windows looking down onto the main walkway and just a lot more decorations in general. The security department spawn has been moved to the entrance near the elevators. Past the SD spawn, we have the arsenal, which hasn't changed too much. It's just been cosmetically changed mostly back behind the mtf and rt spawns we have the tram station and the shooting range the shooting range is now a bit more functional because you can actually move the targets back to a meter you'd like and then the max it can go back is 24 meters you know pretty pretty damn far it's 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 kind of a mid-range next up we have a containment breach looking 
catway here with a briefing room that kind of explains some of the SCP's lore and recontainment procedures. Across this catwalk, we have the hangar, which houses a plane type helicopter right here, and also a broken 096 cage for some, you know, cool lore or something. There appears to be a new document here as well, and then a storage area back here. Down the stairs, we have the tram station, which has been revamped just a little bit, with some new chairs and also a security office right here as well. Right now, we are currently in the admin zone, which is where the O5 and SID spawn as of right now. This is the break room. It just has a bunch of props. It's kind of a hangout area. This room also includes one of the brand new status boards. I think it fits the vibe a lot more than what the old ones were, just like regular TVs. And yeah, I think it does fit the times just a little bit better because this game is set in the 1900s, I'm pretty sure. As you walk down the hallways, you'll be able to see portraits of a bunch of different people in the site. Um, I'm not sure if this is like lore accurate or like canon, but you know, you'll have to let me know in the comments. This is the director chamber. This is where all of SID spawns, and yeah, overall, a pretty cool room. Further down this hallway, we have the auditorium, which is just a large roleplay room. Um, you can act as a speech man, I guess, and then, you know, talk about the SCP Foundation and stuff like that. Up next, we have the clerical offices. These are just a couple of numbered offices that are obviously for cosmetic feature. There's nothing really functional in these areas just yet. There's also new water coolers and new props around the map. So now you can get a cup of water. It's the same as a coffee cup, but you know, it's they're basically the same thing, you know. Next we have the department. This is where all the things you want to read get so you can't read them anymore. This is kind of like the archives. It's a bit of a lore room. This is probably where the intelligence agency works most of the day. So yeah, that's pretty cool. If you follow this hallway all the way down, you will eventually find a elevator, which leads to the atrium with the big tree inside of it. There is a new storage room, which is hopefully being planned for some time in the near future. And it doesn't really look like there's anything being built back there as of right now. Next, we have the communications room. This is a very messy, very wiry room. This used to be the mainframe. I'm pretty sure it was just rebuilt. There's the arsenal that we covered earlier. And then we have the control room that has always been here. So yeah. Anyways, I feel like I'm yapping a little bit. So here's a montage of all the brand new build changes coming in the customization update. There's also new music for every single event in the game, including the one you just heard, the 076, the riot, and the 610 events. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Next up, we have some new SCPs to cover. First up, we have the new SCP-714, which is basically just a ring in a box, which you can just open and put on. So at first sight, this ring doesn't do that much. The special thing about this SCP is that it prevents you from contracting any disease or any uh, chemical threats, I guess you could say. So. When I put myself in front of this, I am completely immune to the gases. If I didn't have this on, I would quickly become green and I would die if I didn't have a medic around me. This ring also prevents you from contracting SCP-008. I'm also immune to SCP-409 and a few more infectious SCPs around the map. Next SCP we have is SCP-394, which is right across from the control room. This replaced the gold bar SCP as it was kind of a, you know, it didn't really have that many uses. So this SCP has a cool use. Basically, you can put this thing on other people and it will make them a bit more skinnier. It eventually gets to the point where you have a hard time walking. I'm not exactly familiar with this SCP, but it kind of reminds you of the old man grandpa clock SCP with the uh, walking debuff. But yeah, yeah, overall, it's pretty cool for testing. Next up, we have SCP-1056. So the more minutes you have on this clock, the larger you get. And I don't think I can actually reach this thing anymore. Yeah, the max size on this thing is 9 minutes and 50 seconds, which grows you to absolutely astronomical size. This is why the roof is so massive on this place. But eventually, the Grinch's heart grows too big and then he dies of cardiac arrest because um, I don't think anybody can handle being this large, especially a human. And eventually... I die. Rest in peace. Same thing goes for going small as well. One minute will bring you back to regular as you can see. And once you bring it down to below a minute, you actually start to shrink. As you can see, we are small people. 
we can't actually use our guns um, unless we're regular sized because that would be kind of overpowered. So yeah, this is the tiniest you can get. And then once you set it down to zero seconds, you become atomic level and then you die. All right, next we have SCP-310, the all-consuming flame. Yeah, yeah, don't touch it. Well, once you open it up and touch the flame as this man is about to, Um, it's actually an infectious SCP, ethnically, so it's actually immune with the ring SCP, I'm pretty sure. Um, you can actually run around and infect other people, so if there's a lot of people in the same room, and you want to set them all on fire, that's the SCP to go. Next up, we have SCP-569. There are skulls that come out. At first, they're pretty tame. Um, they kind of just chill and, you know, have just regular AI. Once you pull this lever... That's how you recontain them. Um, I think you'll have to close all the boxes. But in order to aggro these guys, you're going to have to shoot at them. And once you shoot one, it turns into a skull and aggros on sight. So basically, if they see me, they'll immediately start chasing. As you can see, pretty difficult to kill. And eventually, you'll be turned into a statue. And finally, we have the SCP-610, which along with economy should have been an update on its own. SCP-610 is located at the end of the lower connex, at the end of this long curved hallway right here. SCP-610's containment chamber is the largest in the entire game because of its research area dedicated to it, its massive containment chamber, and the gigantic observation ring that kind of surrounds it as well and yeah i would say this is probably at least two times bigger than 106's containment stepping out here you will see the massive containment area of 610 so yeah as you saw in the intro the only way to activate this scp is to blow up the two cryo chambers which are linked up to the syringes that keep this thing cold because if these cryo chambers weren't here the hive mind would grow very very quickly and engulf the entire site in its flesh after you start the event the ci in close proximity will become the more powerful variants such as the scarab in the tank cds will be able to travel down to scp 610 and foundation personnel will also be able to be infected by the head crabs however they will respawn as regular fp and not scp 610 there's a lot more that needs to be covered on 610 not everything is known about it as of right now this will need to be like a guide video by itself because this scp is very very um in depth but yeah, on screen there are just a few of the forms that can be played as the event costs two c4s to start so as long as you have ci you can only equip the c4s at your spawn so you need to survive the trek all the way here without dying which is pretty difficult because you have to go through the entire site and through all the way through connex and down here so but yeah there really is not enough time in this video to cover everything about 610 so this was the customization update update 3.8.0 this is the biggest update of ssrp history and it will probably be the largest one that will ever release because this update was way too big and took way too much time overall this update overhauls most of the game's mechanics such as the economy system the new events the new areas you can explore the new scps the next update will include the new team isd and also we'll be getting some brand new guns and hopefully a functional new weapon system with the new um, attachments hope you guys enjoyed leave your favorite feature of the new update down in the comments below i'd like to see what you guys come up with and to my fellas watching the premiere Spam W in the chat. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I got nothing else to say. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.